and welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be doing the second episode in my houseplant tour series. Last week I took you along throughout my entire living room. Pretty much everywhere except for inside of the IKEA greenhouse cabinet I have. So today that's what I'm going to be showing you. I've had my greenhouse cabinet for probably about a year and a half, a year and eight months, and I absolutely freaking love it. I think it is the perfect place for me to store some of my more needy plants, ones that need a bit more humidity or a bit more consistent environment because I can really control how the environment is within this cabinet with stuff like grow lights and fans and sometimes even a humidifier. I can make this the environment that these plants need to survive and thrive. If you don't know me already, my name is Emma and I make houseplanty content all over the internet. So if you want to follow along with my houseplanty journey and learn something along the way, stick around, watch some more of my videos and subscribe to my channel. Right, let's get into the tour. So this is the Millsbo Ikea cabinet. If you want to see me put it all together and what I think about it a year on and updates I've done, I do have an entire playlist of videos for that. I will link that up in the clickable i button and down below in the description if that's something that you want to watch. So even though my cabinet is actually quite close to a southwest facing window, because these windows are a little bit recessed, it is quite a lot darker than you'd think it would be. And so I do have the girl lights on a decent amount, but for now, let's just do a bit of a tour. I think I'm gonna have to take plants out as I go because it's quite stuffed in here. If you couldn't tell, it is pretty jam packed full. So I think I will take things out as I go and hopefully won't make my living room too messy in the process. So first things first, my hygrometer. Um, this tells me how humid it is in the cabinet as well as the temperature. As you can see, it's pretty freaking warm right now and pretty decently humid. 60% is pretty normal for my cabinet at the minute. Between 60 and 80 is what it typically is. So that's what I like to keep it to keep my tropical plants nice and happy. I think I am currently covering the sensor and that's why it's going up so quickly. But uh, yeah, it's apparently quite humid in here. So first up, we have this plant that is fairly new to me. It is a Syngonium Batik. I got it in my recent plant swap with Claire, the Jungle Haven. It is just a cutting and it's living in moss. It's got two leaves, but they're quite decent size. None of my other Syngoniums have leaves this size. And so I'm very, very excited to hopefully get it to continue growing. That is right next to my Syngonium Red Spot Pink Splash. And it is just a top cutting. It has grown kind of slowly since I've had it, but it's got quite a lot of variegation. I did put it on a Lazy Moss pole because I wanted to watch it climb and it honestly has done a lot better since then. You can see it's grown a lot more compact on the pole. It kind of grew quite leggy down there and then as soon as I put it on a pole it was like leaf 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 leaf. So I think that was a success. Down in this little like recycled takeaway container I have a Hoya Crassio Petrulata Splash. That's quite a mouthful. I'm surprised I remember that name but it is such a gorgeous plant. I'm absolutely obsessed with these leaves. I think this is definitely one of my favorite Hoyas at the moment, just because it is so, so stunning. I got this as a, as a cutting and it's been in my prop box for a while, but I moved it into a different prop box in the cabinet instead. It's just been growing in moss. I'm not too sure if it's rooted, but it seems to be perfectly happy in here. So yeah, I'm just gonna leave it for now. On another lazy moss pole, I have my Skindapsis Tribi Dark Form. And this was one that I had in, I think, soil for a really long time and apparently it just didn't have any roots, even though I thought it did. And so I ended up putting it back into moss when I put it on this pole in hopes that I'd be able to get it to root a little bit better. And I think it's doing quite well now. It's got some new growth on the way, which is super exciting. It hadn't grown any new growth for a while, which I'm not surprised about because it didn't have any roots, but I think it is liking the pole life and I'm hoping that it helps it 
kind of mature a little bit. You can really see the roots growing in the back of the pole there. That's really, really good. I'm so glad I put it on this pole. And this is why I like plastic back poles as well, so I can actually see what's going on in there, because it's pretty stunning. I think I'm gonna talk about the black velvet alocasia now, because it's kind of getting in the way. <laughs> it is doing pretty well. It's kind of doing the one in, one out policy. It's recently put out this new leaf, and I think it's deciding that it doesn't want this one anymore because of it. I think that just means I need to fertilize a little bit more, make sure it's getting enough nutrients. But I absolutely love this plant. I think it is gorgeous. And the leaves just have such a magnificent texture. You can even see the sort of velvety sheen on there. It's just, I mean, it's just gorgeous. So it's doing really well and it's just loving its life in pond in the cabinet getting plenty of humidity and living its best life. Over here, I have a philodendron branditianum, aka a philodendron brandy. I find that so much easier to say. And this one is also doing phenomenally on a moss pole. It is loving life. You can see the difference in leaf size from down here to up here. And then this one's not hardened off yet, so it's definitely going to keep growing. I'm really proud of that sort of jump in growth and I know that wouldn't be possible without the moss pole because I was growing it before without one and it wasn't producing any sort of bigger leaves. In fact, it was producing smaller leaves. So it is just doing so well. And oh my goodness, look at the coloration and variegation on these leaves. I love those like super silvery splashes on the dark kind of bluey green. It is just really, really beautiful. I think when it gets to the top, I'm probably gonna try and chop and prop it and put some back in because it is only one stem currently. And I've kind of like wound the stem along the moss pole to try and get it to extend the life of the moss pole. But hopefully when it gets up there, I can chop and prop and put some more in and make it a bit of a fuller plant. This one in the middle here, is something I'm also so freaking proud of. This is a Scandapsis officinalis, and I got this ages ago, and I rooted it, and I tried to put it in pond, and it just really, really, really didn't like it. It's one of the few plants that I've had that kind of rejected pond, which was quite a surprise for me because every other plant I've had had been absolutely loving the pond life, and so, I took it out of the pond and put it back in the soil, but it was kind of already a bit too late. All of its leaves had died off, and for the longest time it was living as literally a stump in some soil that I just continued watering and continued to be patient with. And that patience paid off because it has grown again, and these leaves are stunning again. They've got that like sort of silvery splashing on them, which makes them so lovely and I just can't get enough of this plant. I can't wait to watch it continue to grow and mature and live for me because it wasn't doing much for so, so long. At the very back and the plant you kind of see the most on the top shelf is my Philodendron Mame. And it is, again, doing fantastically. I kind of recently put it in this pot, relatively recently, it wasn't like last week or anything. I put it in this pot because it is a crawler, or I know some are climbers, but I could tell before I put it anywhere that it was needing something else. I originally put it on a moss pole, which was a mistake. It was definitely, definitely, definitely a crawler, and you can tell that by like the jump in leaf size. Just between that one and this one, it's doing so well. This is the newest leaf here. And it's just growing up towards the light and being its fabulous, happy, heart-shaped, splashy self. Here we have one of my Scandapsis Silver Heroes. And yes, you did hear that correctly. I do have two. And I got two because I was pretty sure that one of them was going to die. It was another plant that rejected Pawn. I swear, this video isn't about things being rejected by Pawn. It was just those two plants. I've never had anything else that didn't like it. But the other one rejected the pond. I think it's down at the bottom. So I'll show that a little bit later. But I got this one as a backup and 
I did not put it in the pond. It is living in soil right now and it is doing pretty well actually. It took a while to grow its new leaf but then when it did it was quite far away so I did put it on a lazy pole. I'm not sure how it's reacting to the pole but I think it is fine for now. Behind that is a Monstera siltepicana, and this is one that I have had for a little while now, and I actually just got another new cutting that I put in there from the Jungle Haven, and it's doing pretty okay. For the longest time, I didn't have it on a pole, and it was producing smaller growth. So again, I put it on a pole to try and help that and hopefully get some bigger growth again. Unfortunately, I did kind of mess up with this leaf and I got it stuck on the yellow sticky traps that are usually in here. So that is a bit of a shame that I lost that, but overall it's doing pretty well and it is sticking to the pole nicely. Like it's nice and attached on there, which is really good. On the other side at the back corner, I have my Syngonium Wenlandii, which is doing absolutely incredibly it almost looks like it's two plants on a single pole. There's kind of like one going on at the bottom and one going on at the top, but that's just where there's a little bit of gap in the middle in the sort of vine there, which is totally fine. It is doing so well. And again, the leaf size between down there and up there is pretty insane. I'm really proud of the amount that it has grown on the pole and it has just flown up it as well so I think it is absolutely loving the pole life and I am not planning on taking it off anytime soon in fact I probably need to fill it more with moss because it's not filled all the way to the top so I will do that mm, probably in the next couple of weeks next to that we have a syngonium milk confetti this is one I got in a swap quite a while ago and it is also doing amazingly. It's just been living in soil, but I love these sort of like really minty leaves. I love, love, love the little pink veins and like tiny pink splotches on the leaves as well. And it's obviously putting out some new growth, which is fantastic. What more could you ask for from a plant? I just think it is so minty. I mean, it is so minty and I just, I love it. I think it's beautiful. Behind that, I have a Cebu Blue vine in some moss, again, from my friend who was giving them to me for free. So that's just chilling there. One of my bajillion Cebu Blues I have at the minute. Down here in the front, I have, I'm pretty sure it's a Magnificum Forgetii. Oh. That might be wrong. It could be a crystalline and magnificum. I have some sort of anthurium. I always get this wrong. I'm really, really bad with hybrids. I should really just like write it on the pot or something. But it is doing, again, so well. Like I got this plant when it was like a single leaf, probably about this size down here. And now look at it. And it's just been living in moss this entire time and absolutely loving life. And just the sparkle in its veins. It's everything. It's everything you can ask for. And look at that velvety sheen. Oh my God, it's beautiful. Next to it, I have another Anthurium. This is the Anthurium Silver Blush that I got from Green Spaces ID. And it has recently graduated the acclimation box. And I also think this one is loving life. It's actually got two new leaves at the minute. That is pretty surreal. Like, look how red these leaves are, these tiny little ones. Maybe it's got a second growth point. I need to properly look, but I'm hoping that it just continues to grow super well. Silver blush is just so stunning. I just love how bright the veins are. Like, if you look at them next to each other, you can tell how different they are, which is something that I can't always tell with anthuriums because a lot of them look quite like this. So I feel like this one's quite a different one in comparison. This prop here is either a Gigas or a Splendid. I am not too sure. I got it fairly recently, like this year in 2022, and it's doing okay. I really, really, really need to put it on a pole because the leaf size is just getting smaller and smaller, and I really think it needs one 
just to be a bit more supportive. It will definitely thank me for it when I do. And then behind it back there is another sea of blue in moss. I'm not gonna pull that out and show you because it's just a sea of blue and I've shown you like a thousand of them. This here that was living behind this anthurium is a Syngonium mojito and boy is it pretty. I just love these mottled leaves. I think they they just very much remind me of a mojito. Make me want to go on a holiday and have some minty beverages. But it had a third leaf that recently passed away. It is just in moss though, so I think it might need a little bit more nutrients in order to like continue sustaining itself because this leaf is fairly new. So I think it was like kind of pushing one out while it was pushing one in. Probably rooted to be honest at this point. So I might put it in some soil or pond and see if that helps it become a bit of a better plant. This here is a Florida ghost. Unfortunately, it's not the happiest at the minute. Whoa, that leaf is so freaking translucent. Um, but it's translucent because it got burnt by the grow light. It was a little bit too close to it. It was too high up. So I recently moved it a bit lower but it is growing quite quickly still. So it's got a new leaf on the way and I'm probably gonna need to move it again. But unfortunately it kind of lost its mintiness. I'm hoping that the next leaf comes out a little bit more minty, but I'm not sure if it will. And then at the very back middle is my Pelionia pulchra, just chilling. I recently cut quite a bit of it off to swap away. And I think that's totally fine. I've chopped and propped it several times and it's perfectly happy just living its life in moss for the past year and a half. This here is a philodendron Burlemark's fantasy and it did have another bigger leaf, but unfortunately that leaf decided it wanted to unalive. So I'm just living with a small leaf for now and what looks like a tiny bit of new growth back there. I hope it continues to grow more. Again, I might try and put this on a pole because I think it deserves that. As you can see, it's gotten a bit leggy, but it's just living at the top of the cabinet up there. And next to it is a very new acquisition for me. It is one of my freaking wishlist plants, an Alocasia Mellow. This one was given to me by Josie, aka Sir Plants A Lot. She's moving house out of the country and she was like, you can take better care of this than I can right now. She wasn't getting on with it very well, hence the yellow spots. So she wanted to give it to me to give it a go and see if I could make it a little bit happier. But I am so freaking excited about it. I think it is so beautiful and the texture is just amazing. I'm in love with it. I kind of skirted around this one here that's actually physically attached to the cabinet. I have tied it on as some sort of support, but it is my Skinapsis Jade Satin. And down here, the leaf doesn't look that happy, but since it has been in the cabinet and kind of going up there, I'm sorry it's really dark, but uh, like I said, it's a dark corner. And if I turn the lights on, it buzzes but it's doing really, really well and it keeps continuing to put out some new growth and all of the new growth is looking a lot healthier than that kind of funky leaf at the bottom, which is really good. So that's the top of the cabinet. It feels very empty right now, but I will put everything back. Oh gosh, probably right now, to be honest, because I will need the space to show you the bottom. There we go, all the plants are back up in the top. Another thing to note is that I do have a bit of a fungus gnat infestation in my cabinet at the minute. I normally have yellow sticky traps hanging throughout it and they were absolutely covered in fungus gnats. And to be honest, I didn't think they looked pretty enough to go in this video and I want this to be a very aesthetic, pleasing to the eye video. But I do wanna say that the reality is I this is what the cabinet looks like when I have my fungus gnat traps up. And that is all the time. So I'm working on it. I'm working on getting rid of them with mosquito bits and gnat traps and sometimes hydrogen peroxide. But yeah, unfortunately it is something I'm dealing with at the moment. So let's move down to the bottom. To me, the bottom feels a little bit less full. I'm not sure if that is the case. It does have lots and lots and lots of plants in it still, but I think they're just a little less jam packed in there. So yeah. Let's start at the bottom. This is a 
Oh goodness, it's the other one. It's either a Gigas or a Splendid. I am not too sure, but again, I have put it on a moss pole because it's wanting to climb. It's just put out this new leaf, which is a little bit curly. I think it was stuck in the caterpill up before it, but I'm hoping that it adapts to the new pole fairly soon and it can continue to grow up. It is just in moss down at the bottom, so maybe some soil will be good for it as well. This here is another new alocasia I have. It is an alocasia regal shield. I absolutely freaking love these leaves. Like, can, can you see that shine? It's like not really velvety like the black velvet, but it's still got that sort of sh satin sheen to it, which makes it like just a very, very, very nice plant to look at. It is growing what looks like a new leaf down here. I'm hoping it does because that would be amazing. But it's also just living in pond in a little reservoir down here. And I'm really hoping that I can grow it nice and big like the gorgeous plant that Regal Shields can be. This is that other Scadapsis Silver Hero I was talking about. The one that did not like the pond. Eventually it did pop out a new leaf, this one here, and another newer leaf. Just recently you can tell the difference in color because the newer leaf is a bit greener. But I love how they kind of mature into this very, very blue silver color. And it's doing so much better now. I've been considering putting them together into the same pot and joining them because they are the same plant after all and I like having bushier plants rather than multiples if that makes sense. But I'm a bit nervous too because I'm scared to put the other one into pawn after the shock I had with this one and I'm scared to take this one out of pawn now that it's so established in here. So I'm just gonna continue being scared until I uh, warm it up and decide that I can put one in the other and that will be a glorious day. But for now, they will stay as two. This is another, another new plant. I knew this was going to happen when I was doing my plant swap with Claire. She gave me so many amazing cuttings that I knew, knew, knew were going to go inside the Ikea cabinet. But this is a Philodendron Ernestii. And I have never seen this plant be sold anywhere. I've only ever seen Claire have it. It's not really a very popular one to be sold but it has the most beautiful like ruffled stem and this little like peekaboo of red at the top and it is unrooted, very new cutting, but it is a very, very beautiful philodendron and I'm super excited to have it in my collection. This is an Amidrium Medium Silver and this has gone through a bit of a journey. It was another plant that I got that didn't have the best start. I got it and it kind of very promptly got root rot. So it really was like basically starting from a wet stick again. But I have managed to get it to grow two leaves, which I'm very, very excited about. I've put it on a pole because I have heard that Amidrium mediums, if you don't give them support, they'll just kind of put out super duper leggy growth. And I don't really want that for this one, but it's starting to put out a new leaf down there, so I'm hoping, hoping, hoping that it stays quite compact. This is my Sissus Discolor. It has definitely seen some better days. I think it is very unhappy at the moment, and I'm still not sure why. I did recently decide to put it in soil because I think the moss it was in just wasn't giving it what it needed. So I'm hoping that it's dealing with the transition to soil okay since, I mean, all of this crisping was here before I moved it over. So I know it's not that, but I just really, really hope that I can save it because if not, that'll be my second scissors discolor that I've managed to kill. Next to it is my Philodendron Cream Splash. It is a kind of version of the Philodendron Brazil but with these gorgeous white spots in the leaves as well, or cream spots. I think mine is growing kind of oddly. Down the bottom, it looks very brazil with like tiny bits of white. 
And up here, it has gotten a lot more white, which I think is probably because it's under a grow light now when it wasn't necessarily under a grow light before. But its new leaves are coming in quite wrinkly. I'm not sure if that's because the white is... Like, when you get variegated plants, sometimes the white sides are a little bit smaller and, like, a little bit... Oh, what's the word? Like, they're just a bit smaller and don't grow quite right, so I think maybe that's what's happening with these bits here, but I am not too sure. It is continuing to grow, not as fast as I thought it would, but I think it is because it's getting lighter and lighter with every leaf, which is very nice because I got this plant in order for it to be nice and creamy. And again, it's on a pole. It it loves the pole life. This is the back of the pole and you can really see there's like quite a lot of really nice roots in there. So it is very happy where it is. At the back corner, I have my Philodendron Milano Chrysum. And this plant is doing really, really well actually. I have honestly chopped and propped it multiple times. And every time it's grown back with an absolute vengeance. And it is absolutely loving this pole. And you can see how shiny these leaves are. They're, they're so velvety and satiny. Unfortunately, I did recently, by recently I mean just this second, notice that this leaf it has somehow like become, like the stem has been knocked or something, which is super unfortunate, which means this leaf is not gonna come through. But hopefully it's broken in a place where it can still produce growth going forward and give me another leaf. You can see since the bottom, the first leaf, all the leaves are getting bigger along the pole, which is amazing. So I'm hoping that I can kind of get back to this sort of really big leaf size, which I really like. I mean, who doesn't want really massive dark velvety leaves? In here, I have an alocasia bulb. I am not totally sure what it is, to be honest. I have a couple different bulbs just in my collection and I tend to forget what they are because I, I forget what they are until they <laughs> grow leaves again and then I can tell. But it looks to be like a little bit of a pinky one, which is quite fun. Oh, maybe it's the Zebrina! Because you can see it's got that little bit of Zebrina-y striping on there. Maybe it is. Hopefully it is. That would be really, really cool. Um, but anyways, it's just living in pond. I've also got another bulb in there doing the shallow puddle method. I think this one's a silver dragon and it looks like it might be starting to sprout, but it doesn't look like it's got that many roots. So I'm just going to leave it in this little sauce cup for the time being. Back to the bottom, we have a Hoya. This is a Hoya parasitica and it's just on a round trellis. It's a bit crooked right now, but that is okay. But I love these very splashy leaves. Y'all know how I love a splashy Hoya. They just make me so happy. And it's doing pretty well, actually. This leaf isn't quite as splashy. I think it's because it's kind of shaded by other plants in this corner. So I'm hoping if I can give it some brighter light, it'll put out some more splashes again. But even still, it's doing its very best. Oh god, is this the Splendid? I think this might actually be the Splendid. <laughs> oh god, I am so bad with these philodendron hybrids. They kind of all look very similar to me. I think this one is actually the Splendid because I'm pretty sure I got that with this leaf, which is a Splendid. <laughs> so this is my philodendron Splendid. And it is doing really, really well. It's on a lazy moss pole. And again, I'm pretty sure it's liking it. You can't really see much rootage from the back, but I just know because these two leaves have come in so close to each other, you can tell it's not trying to reach for something to climb anymore like it was in that gap there. So it's just living its best life. I feel like I've said that about most of these plants, but I think Almost all of them are living their best lives in this cabinet. This is where I do get a little bit confused. So I'm pretty sure I got both of these as dragon scale alocasias, but I'm also pretty sure that this is a silver dragon. Because like, if you look at those two leaves, they are not the same plant. They're very much so different. So I think this one is actually 
a silver dragon, which is pretty amazing. I love the very light blue gray leaves of the silver dragon with the black veins. It's kind of like the opposite of the contrasty veins of an anthurium, so it's a little bit exciting. And then this dragon scale is also absolutely stunning. These are both in pawn and they're love and life. This one is starting to get proper bigger leaves. Not huge still, but I feel like it's properly maturing. Ooh, whoa, that leaf is insane. Do you see that? Oh my God, I'm obsessed with that leaf. That's my new favorite leaf, guys. I think it is the prettiest thing I've seen today. Wow, I love it. So I recently put this one in the cabinet. This plant isn't actually doing the best. This is an Epipremnum Kujang and it was from my Green Spaces ID order. It graduated the acclimation box and actually graduated being propped altogether. And I've put it in some semi-hydro from Soil Ninja and on a moss pole like a few days ago. So it is just acclimating to this new situation. I'm hoping that it perks up again in a couple of days because it can be quite a shock to the system to go from like damp all the time moss to pawn. It's a very different growing medium. So hopefully it perks up soon. At the back, the big plant in there, holy cow. It is one of my biggest philodendrons, like, or my velvet philodendrons. It is a philodendron glorious and boy is she glorious. I think I got it with these two leaves and this leaf growing in. This leaf back here got damaged in transit, but since it's been living in the cabinet pretty much its entire life, it has grown this new leaf here, which is huge, like properly big. And it's got another new one that you can see is not hardened off at all yet. So hopefully that one grows even bigger. It's on a moss pole back there, but I'm pretty sure I'm gonna have to take it out of the cabinet fairly soon because it is taking up a whole lot of space in there and I'll probably need the space fairly soon. But transitioning this one outside of the cabinet is quite scary to me, so I'm not sure when or how I'm gonna do that. If any of you have any tips for transferring plants from inside of the cabinet or from a very humid spot to a less humid spot, do let me know as all advice will be appreciated. I have three little plants on this shelf here. I have this Syngonium that I got for my birthday. I don't remember what it's called, but I will write it in here, but it's just got this really nice half moon pink and essentially white leaf. And then the next leaf is more of the white and kind of arrowhead shaped. It's really gorgeous. I can't remember what it's called. Again, syngoniums are hard for me because they just have so many fun names. I feel like it's like milk confetti and gray ghost and they're all very fun. So remembering them isn't as easy for me as some other plants. Next to it, I've got a fishbone cactus. This is from the Jungle Haven. She is obsessed with her fishbone cactus and rightly so because it is stunning. But she advised me to put it in the cabinet and I, I don't know, it feels really weird having a succulent in the cabinet, but it is, I mean, it's been a day, so I can't really say if it's been doing well or not, but it hasn't immediately died. So hopefully it really likes it in here and it will just thrive. This is a Syngonium Moonshine. It is very small. To be honest, it hasn't grown the best for me. It's been quite slow. It's only put out a few leaves in the time I've had it, though it does have a new one in there, which is very exciting. It is in soil, but I think I need to put it in a bit of a brighter spot and probably give it a bit more fertilizer because I would like to see it mature a little bit because it's kind of just stayed a bit of a baby plant in here. At the top here, I have three plants in pawn just in this little basket shelf. This first one is an Alocasia Mitchellitiana, I think it's called. I just want them to get as much light as possible and then they're getting lots of light and then suddenly they're touching the light. So that's on me. I need to be a bit more careful about that. Next to it slash behind it is my Alocasia cupria or red secret. 
This I've propped from a bulb. My like mother plant died, unfortunately, but I found a couple bulbs in the soil. And this one took quite a while to grow in. But even in its baby form, its leaves have that amazing sort of red, purple, pink, greeny sheen to them. So I really like this plant and I'm really glad I was able to save it in some form. And then the third plant back there is a Scandapsis Silver Lady. And boy, it looks so blue on camera right now. And it's just got these amazing kind of like longer Scandapsis leaves and like super duper silver. It's doing really well. It was taking a really long time to put out new growth. It only had those two smaller leaves for quite a long time. But then it put this bigger one out and since then it's been growing a lot faster. As you can see, there's new growth in there as well which is super duper duper exciting. Got a few more plants at the backpack there. Let me just get them out from behind the Glorious, which is very much so blocking them and like putting them in the dark right now because it is getting a bit darker in here. Sorry if the footage is getting dark. It's my bad. It's not the brightest of spots and I don't like filming with the grow lights on. This little one in Pawn is a Hoya Grey Ghost and oh my goodness, I love how light these leaves are. I think they are absolutely stunning. It honestly hasn't done anything for me. Like it was growing in water and I put it in pond and it's not grown at all yet, which is fine, it's fair, but I hope that one day I can get it to grow something. But for now, it's just living its two leaf, kind of like bunny ear vibes life. Underneath that, in this little container, I have three alocasia bulbs. They are an alocasia jacqueline, an alocasia stingray, and an alocasia longloba grandis. And only one of them has sprouted so far. To be honest, I should probably take that out and put it in its own container, not being blocked because it is a little bit too tall for this space now. But it is the longloba, which I hope continues to grow well. The other ones in there haven't really done anything yet. I'm hoping they will, but only time will tell. Sometimes allocated bulbs take a minute to actually get going. And then last, but certainly not least, I've got an Epipremnum Pinotum Variegated. It is growing pretty well. I think its moss is a little bit dry at the moment, so I should probably give it a decent water. But it's growing okay, but it's not growing the worst either. It has given me quite a lot of growth since I got it, but the growth hasn't been the most variegated at the same time. So it's a bit hit and miss, which is a little bit unfortunate, but I still love it and I'm really excited to watch it continue growing. So that is it. That is everything inside of my Ikea greenhouse cabinet. I really, really hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to see the other videos in this series, I will be linking them all down in the description below. Last week, like I said, I did my living room tour and next week I'm going to be taking you on a deep dive inside of my office houseplants. I have several plants in there. Sometimes it's a little bit messy, but I really, really like them. So stick around next week for that. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up down below and leave a comment on other houseplanty things you'd like me to talk about in the future and subscribe for more. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye!